graduates. <laughs> We're proud of you, your talent, discipline, and achievement, and in the face of truly unprecedented obstacles, you have persevered, learned much, and are ready for your next steps. It seems fitting that I speak to you this graduation day as I too am graduating. <laughs> we are tied together, you and I, in this moment. A transition, this ending, which is also a beginning. A single moment connecting one time of life to another. The past to the future. Resolution to modulation. <laughs> you see? And as you begin the working out of the themes of your lives, the big question looming over all of us today is, so, what's next? Or put a bit more poetically by Mary Oliver at the end of her beautiful poem, The Summer Day, what should you do with your one wild and precious life? Yikes. <laughs> this question is big and scary and is in fact unknowable. No one knows what the future will bring. When I graduated from college, I went directly on to grad school at USC, <clears throat> where I planned to stay for two years and complete a master's in voice. 12 years later, I graduated with a DMA in choral music. Later, when I came to SOU, I said at my job interview, I would stay three to five years, try to make a difference, and then move on. This time I was off by about 30 years. So if the future is a moving target, what do we do now? Earlier in the summer day, Mary Oliver provides her answer. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down on the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I have been doing all day. Poetic, but not really the best career advice, perhaps. <laughs> but Oliver here is not attempting career advice as much as attempting to dig down to the central life question, what does a meaningful life look like? It seems to me her point is to be present with your life, to be grateful for each day, and as your life takes unexpected turns, which it will, to be present and grateful in the changes. To which I would add, be a good person. Help make the world a better place. What should you do with your one wild and precious life? To you who have been gifted with music, Sarah Teasdale's amazing poem, Barter, offers this rallying cry. Spend all you have for loveliness. Buy it and never count the cost. For one white singing hour of peace, count many a year of strife well lost. And for a breath of ecstasy, give all you have been or could be. One white singing hour of peace. What price can be placed on experiencing art like this? The title barter implies an exchange. In order to get something you want, you give something in return. And here's the point. Beauty and art are worth fighting for. The gift of music, even when we pay full admission, is still a gift. And this longed for gift is needed by the world. Find a way to create, support, and encourage beauty. What should you do with your one wild and precious life? Mary Oliver leaves this question unanswered, and you must write your own endings, but I would say, Serve beauty, fall down in the grass, give of yourself and your gifts freely. Do not count the cost. Bring enchantment to this disenchanted world. Uh, it is now my great privilege to introduce the president of SOU, Dr. Rick Bailey. Good evening, everyone. I am uh, honored to be with you. I am very honored to be with all of you. Uh, it's interesting because I think Dr. French was poking into my mind in the, in the comments that I wanted to make tonight uh, very briefly. 
Uh, let me say this. I, I want to start with an acknowledgement of all of the wonderful people here at the Oregon Center for the Arts who put this thing together. So can we have a round of applause for all of them? <laughs> Next, I want to acknowledge all of the family and friends who are here with us tonight to celebrate these amazing scholars. They will be the first to say that they did not do this on their own. So thank you all for the support and encouragement that you have given them along the way. Give yourselves a round. Um, and of course, to the faculty and staff here at Southern Oregon University, uh, they are so incredibly committed to the success of our students. And so to be the president of, of this incredible organization is a, is a real gift, one that I don't take for granted. Um, I will leave you with this, and it's a beautiful compliment to, to what Paul mentioned. Um, I was trying to think of, a, of an inspirational quote, and the one I came up with is from Maria von Trapp. Maria von Trapp once said, music acts like a magic key to which even the tightest closed hearts open. Think about that for a second. For me, this, this event tonight is a celebration and really a recognition that the human condition is messy. We are incredibly flawed people. And you can't turn on the news, any news, without hearing about challenges and problems and things that we all have to overcome. But at the same time, there is incredible beauty. There's incredible beauty in this world. And so tonight, for me, this is a recognition of individuals who have taken up the responsibility for sharing that beauty with the world. And that is something truly worth celebrating. On behalf of all of us at Southern Oregon University, our students, our faculty, our staff, our board, our partners, everyone, we say a heartfelt congratulations and thank you for taking this on. And now it is my privilege to introduce our provost here at SOU, Dr. Sue Walsh. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, President Bailey, Dr. French. I'll be brief as well because I really want us to get to the real reason why we're here. Um, as Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, I oversee the curriculum and I work closely with the faculty. And I just want to start today by thanking our amazing faculty in music. I've, I've loved working for 30 plus years with most of them and, uh, and, and they're amazing. And, and I just want to say that we value personal attention uh, at SOU, you know that. Our students hopefully would agree with me. And I think graduates, if I have one word of advice for you, it's to remember your faculty's wise counsel and their encouragement through your careers and your lives because that will stay with you forever. Um, I also applaud your families. I want to underscore what President Bailey said. Um, the friends that you've had and the unconditional support both have given you as you get over the finish line. And I just also want to close with a quote, something I heard a couple of years ago in an interview with Wynton Marsalis, the virtuoso trumpeter, composer, teacher, and artistic director of jazz at Lincoln Center. Um, he has promoted classical and, and jazz music throughout the world, often to young audiences. And he was talking about the important role that music has played historically in the fight for civil rights. He said, and I quote, we are a stronger country when we embrace our most fundamental and sacred ideals together. And those people who believe in them form themselves in alliance against those who don't believe in them. We're not an empire, we're a republic. The blues teaches you that sometimes things don't work out and you have to be adult and not naive and use your will to create change. We see our students around the world embracing this. Our country should have a leadership role in embracing the world, end quote. So my challenge to all of you is to use your music, whether it's playing an instrument or singing out beautifully, to create the change you wish to see in the world. Be well, be safe, and stay in touch. Thank you.
Hello, I'm David Humphrey. I'm director of the Oregon Center for the Arts uh, at Southern Oregon University, and I'm proud and delighted to be here. Uh, I want to thank Paul French, who has been professor here for 33 years and is retiring this year, has given so much grace and art to this university. We will forever be thankful. Thank you, Paul. I want to thank our president, Rick Bailey. I want to thank our provost, Sue Walsh, and our distinguished faculty and our honorable graduates. Thank you for being here. So my speech is going to talk about reflections. So I reflect back when you first came to Southern Oregon University. I spoke to you that upon entering the Oregon Center for the Arts at SOU, you were now considered an artist and have taken the first step towards your career in creative industries. That was a memorable milestone. Now you have reached another important milestone as you graduate with your degree and proceed into the world with a refined craft and greater knowledge of music. The completion of your individual degree signifies a tremendous amount of work and dedication to your art. However, you've done this at one of the most difficult times in our living history. I reflect on a wonderful quote about the film star and dancer Fred Astaire that says, sure, he was great, but don't forget that his dance partner, Ginger Rogers, did everything he did but backwards and in high heels. <laughs> you have demonstrated your determination and resoluteness, excellent indications of your chances for success in your chosen careers. Some other useful thoughts on reflections are surround yourself with really good people. The people that surround yourself is a reflection of you. Transitions are a time for reflection and a time for looking forward, which is now. And finally, music is critical in our lives and culture. It is the inspiration that drives us. It also the window to our souls. It is a reflection as to who we are, what we stand for, and where we're going. Congratulations, graduates. You have danced backwards in high heels superbly, and now move forward. Thank you. It's now my privilege to introduce our alumni speaker, Jennifer Matsura. Uh, Jennifer uh, has a degree in voice from SOU. Then she went to Arizona to get uh, certi certified in music therapy. After that, she decided she wanted to do more work in that area and did the master's in counseling program and now works as a musician and a therapist. And all those things I said about making music part of your life, some of you it will come easily to. Some of you will have to work at it. Um, and find other ways to um, put bread on the table, but don't forget your music. Um, ma make art. What the society values isn't necessarily the right thing. What you're doing and what you've studied is valuable. So uh, Jennifer exemplifies all of that. Please uh, welcome her. Good evening, and congratulations to the graduates, the parents, the professors, all here tonight. It is such an honor to, to witness this important moment and to help celebrate your incredible accomplishments. I can't imagine how challenging these last few years have been for everyone in academia. Thank you for persevering in what seems like impossible times, and thank you for including me in your celebration. I didn't start out as a music major when I came to the SOU in, as a freshman in 2001. I had tentative plans to become a physical therapist and had declared a general science major to meet a scholarship requirement. Secretly though, I was exploring, searching, seeking, feeling. I was 18. <laughs> 
I was armed, though, with the bulletproof answer to the question, what are you going to do? I readily told my family, friends, and anyone who would ask, I'm going to be a physical therapist. What I didn't tell them was that along with biology, I had enrolled in non-Western music history with Dr. Terry Longshore, cultural anthropology, Shakespeare lit, uh, abnormal psychology, and I casually brought my oboe with me and played in Dr. Cindy Hutton's wind ensemble, and I joined jazz choir. Truly, my parents' worst nightmare. <laughs> During my undergrad years, I felt a lot of pressure. I experienced a lot of guilt and fear around taking time to explore the academic world. It felt indulgent. I relied on scholarships to help pay for school. I moved out of the dorms to find less expensive housing. I worked three jobs. I felt the clutch of rising rent, bills, and general cost of living getting tighter and tighter. I didn't think that the fun, interesting, heart-connecting, joyful interactions that I was having in music were as acceptable or even as valuable as working toward a career in healthcare or getting a real job that could support me and create financial stability. It was joy or survival. Survival or joy. That choice did not sit well with me, so I spent the next few years of my life fighting to change the or to an and. During that time, Dr. Paul French had taken me under his wing. He invited me to audition for his chamber choir and encouraged me to take music ther theory and oral skills. He took the time and voice lessons to really listen to what I needed in order to grow not only as a musician, but as a person. He helped rescue me from the limitations of my own self-doubt. It was as if I was trapped in an arcade crane machine. Do you know what those are with the stuffed animals in them? <laughs> and he delicately, with the focused and determined skill of a hopeful child, lifted me up out of a sea of dollar store versions of myself and gave me a home in the music department. Home. Stability. I was starting to get it. He created opportunities for me to prove to myself that I could do incredible things. Dr. French inspired us to create beauty by teaching us how to listen to ourselves and to each other. Shape, tone, spinning forward motion became the mantra for our musical path and our personal journeys as well. The richness of the experiences I had working with Paul French, Jody French, Terry Longshore, Alex Tutanoff, Fred Grimland, Ellie Murray, Laurie Hunter, Cindy Hutton, and Brett Bender began to amass a tremendous sense of wealth within me. I completed my psychology degree and my music degree in 2007. I had long abandoned the idea of becoming a physical therapist, but I understood more than ever that I wanted to help people. I was determined to find a way to survive and find joy. With my psychology degree in my right hand and my music degree in my left hand, I marched myself back to my tiny apartment and my retail job selling shoes. After graduation, the first job I got was actually in music. I had auditioned for, the Rogue, Opera, for Rogue Opera to perform and tour in their educational outreach program. Over the course of that school year, we took our little company to elementary and middle schools all across Oregon and did 125 performances for over 25,000 children. There was so much joy. 25,000 individual sounds of joy, laughter, wonder, and excitement, and so little funding. I ended up getting another degree in music therapy at Arizona State University in my continued quest for survival and joy. In my clinical internships there, I began to realize the efficacy of basic functions of music shaping and guiding the therapeutic process. Things were starting to click. I called upon the structure of cadence and sonata form to provide predictability, familiarity, and comfort in my sessions with clients. 
I thought of Dr. Cindy Hutton and Rhett Bender in music theory as I witnessed at-risk teens who were in and out of juvie and throwing tables and chairs at teachers, I witnessed them settle into the safety of the exposition, development, and recapitulation of our sessions. I called upon tempo and rhythm to sync the strum of my guitar to the breath of a client suffering from chronic pain. I remember Dr. Terry Longshore and the beautiful, complex, rhythmic communication that circulated around this stage as we performed Steve Reich's drumming. So much was being said, and no one was talking. Everyone was listening. I started to feel and receive huge returns on my investment in seeking out music. The wealth and knowledge from my professors here at SOU contributed to my growth in ways I hadn't imagined. In working with special needs populations and the geriatric community and at-risk youth, I quickly determined that I needed more training in mental health to support the needs that were being presented. I returned to Southern Oregon University to complete a master's in mental health counseling. As a grad student, I did my counseling internship at Crater High School in Central Point. There were two counselors there for the entire school, Donna Fisher and myself, two counselors for a student body of 1,500. Survival began to take on new meaning. When I graduated with my bachelor's degrees in 2007, 30 people, 33 people had died and 23 were wounded in the mass shooting at Virginia Tech. The following year on Valentine's Day, six people, people were killed and 21 injured at Northern Illinois University. In 2012, when I graduated with my master's in mental health counseling, 27 people died and two were injured in the mass shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School. I began to finally understand the arc of my learning. It was no longer about an or or an and. Survival didn't just mean putting food on the table and paying rent. Survival meant not being shot or killed in a hate crime. Survival was having access to health care. Survival was not dying during a global pandemic. The question that started to wake me up in the middle of the night was how? How do we survive? I thought, what if I was mistaken about the relationship between survival and joy? And then I came back to music. Paul would talk about the function of his place on the podium. He would say, look up. Let the music go through me. I am just the prism refracting the light of your collective sound. What I am now realizing and continue to realize is that my life's work isn't about choosing between survival and joy. It isn't about trying to find a way to have both. My life's work is about survival through, dro through joy, survival through music. We need these beautiful, vulnerable, connecting experiences now more than ever to survive in this world. Music, with its healing, life-giving, soul-changing, passion-stirring, heart-mending capabilities, is so crucial to us being alive, to us being human, to us being okay. Now you, the graduating class of 2022, are armed with music degrees. You are outfitted in your shining dedication to honing your craft and adorned with the unforgettable experiences you've shared with your colleagues here at SOU. You are the light seekers the bearers of hope, the guides to peace, the guardians of communication, the healers of wounds beyond medicine, and the gatekeepers of love. Your incredible knowledge of music and your ability to reach people through music is inspiring and fills me with hope. There is so much strength, beauty, and value in you sharing your unique instrument 
It is a bright light in our dark world. Every time you set foot on stage, you offer the world a gift. And your invitation to the audience to join you on a journey is powerful and transcendent. We need you now more than ever. You are essential to our survival, our collective survival through music, through joy. I wish you all joy and courage in the course you choose. You are not alone. We are here with you. I'd like to end by reading you a text, as all speakers do, apparently, <laughs> uh, by, Den by Ben Dunwell, which was set to a choral piece by Will Todd called Among Angels. And we did this piece with the Southern Oregon Repertory Singers with Paul French. Fear not, you, the dark. We carry you on soft, wide wings. Find only joy in the golden heavens and the shining earth. Seek out light and bind it to your own light. Fear not, you, the dark. We carry you on soft, wide wings. Colleagues, friends, we are in the business of seeking out light in the dark. Seek out light and bind it. Bind it to your own light. Thank you. The world is full of so many beautiful things on our way home. When I was growing up, I lived in the same town, the same house, for 18 years. The idea of home was an unmovable impression, not necessarily the house itself, but the tree in my backyard on warm summer days, the very top of the butte overlooking the entire town, the view of miles and miles of wheat fields, into the horizon, green stalks blowing like ocean waves in the wind the softball field dugout reading books and listening to music long after the season was over, the old highway, mostly abandoned and forgotten, listening to music and rollerblading. Mostly, however, when I think about home, I think about the walk to my house, the daily commute, changing slightly each day with the weather, trees fading in and out of color, street shapes change with the snow and the ice. This place I called home for 18 years was an area without much progress, in regards to acceptance and sidewalk maintenance. I can recall every sidewalk crack, the trees welcoming me as I walk past in the brisk spring air. I can count the blocks to my job at the one and only diner in town and think of riding my bike home in the dark, flashlight taped to the handlebars because I didn't have a bike light. As I fall asleep sometimes, I imagine the beautiful walk to my childhood home. I think about graduating and moving to Colorado for my undergrad change of pace, change of scenery. I remember it being negative 14, the kind of cold that hurts your skin, your lungs, your eyes. Bundled up so tightly, it would take twice as long to walk to school. That cold had a way of clearing your head. I think about the snow-capped Song de Cristo Mountains, always lingering in the distance, silent listeners on the days that my steps to and from school were a little heavier, a little slower, a little more desolate. I can remember these sidewalks, too, when my brain is too full I place myself in the cold air and walk to my undergraduate music building. I applied to grad school for primarily selfish reasons, thinking about my own skills, my own progression career, my hands, how I could become a better musician and, well, work towards having the chops I always wanted. I got so much more than that. I wasn't expecting to fall in love, fall in love with the surrounding mountains, the way winter comes and things do not wither, they only get greener. Everything covered in moss, like velvet wallpaper on every tree, rock, and wall. The leaves turning so red in the fall, it seems like they had to have been painted that way. The walk from my apartment to the school, such a ritual, 
tapping the colored leaves as I walk by, like giving the trees a little high five. These walks home filled my head with creations, lyrics, ideas, and projects. I moved to Ashland knowing no one with the expectation I would be in and out without consequence. I wasn't expecting to make lifelong friends. Meeting people that are so incredible and important to me, people I want to collaborate with and follow forever. I walk the halls and hear the many instruments, the people practicing, the people learning and growing and collaborating. I think of watching my friends on the well-lit stage in unmatched energy. I feel so proud of my peers and so happy to have met and known them. Two years is not a very long time to live somewhere. And now we're graduating. We move on. We leave and change, adapt and grow. They cut the trees down behind my childhood home. But as I fall asleep, I can still find myself up in them, thinking about the clouds moving by so quickly, listening to the lullaby of leaves rustling in the wind. All of the friends I had in my undergrads have all graduated and left. If I went back, I wouldn't see a familiar student face. However, when I'm anxious, I find myself in my undergraduate music lab, surrounded by familiar faces, laughs, secret handshakes. I can log into my old school account and lean back in my chair, gazing out the window, saying hello to the locals, the large deer population. I can breathe the painful air and clear my head, knowing it'll all be okay in the end. One day, we will all understand the loneliness of not seeing a familiar student face at this school. You will all walk home for the last time. We grow, we change, trees get cut down, people grow and leave. Our routines change, our paths alter. We find homes in the strangest, most unexpected parts of the world and ourselves. When you need it, you can trace your steps skipping over sidewalk chalk up the steps to your Ashland home, the music building center stage. You can listen to the collaborative practice room symphony and picture the smiling faces of these musicians, these students, these friends. The world is full of so many beautiful things on our way home. And the world will be full of so many beautiful things on your way to your next home. And the next one, and the next one, and the next. Thank you. Elena and I'm a cellist. Um, but when I first started at SOU, I wasn't totally convinced that I was going to be a music major. I was teetering between music and international studies, actually, which I could never imagine graduating with a degree in international studies now. Um, but yeah, it took me about one day of class to figure out that <laughs> <laughs> music is what I'm supposed to be doing. And it's because I came to this realization that school can actually be really fun. I, before that, I just thought that school was school and you enjoy some of it and some of it you don't enjoy. Some of it you might get bored. Um, but music felt totally different. I was so interested in all of it and none of it felt like a waste of time. It felt like all the things I'd been learning since I joined orchestra in the sixth grade, all those things were coming together in college and turning me into who I, I, I was becoming. Um, it was challenging, and sometimes really challenging, and I had to ask for help. Music theory is very difficult. Um, but I always knew that I was doing it to help me become a better musician, and I was moving in the direction that I wanted to go. In the same vein, I want to talk about the community we have here in the music department, because I do truly think it's special. From the professors, to the students, to the staff, we're creating something I think we can all be proud of. The students are incredibly accepting and friendly and non-competitive, which I know is funny for me to say because I am the only cellist, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but it's true. And I see it in the way students attend each other's recitals. I saw it in the way they came to my recital and cheered me on after every single piece. Um, I see it when people solo in jazz band or perform at Convo. This building and these people are special because we want to see each other succeed, and you can feel that. The staff is the same way. I have the private phone numbers of so many professors <laughs> because they want to be there for you. 
And as with anything, you get out of a situation what you put into it, and these professors work so hard. Dr. Keller, you've been here for two years, and now we have music and a ton of production equipment and software that I don't really understand, but I think it's <laughs> really, really cool. Um, and this is Dr. Lundahl's first year as director of bands, but it seems like she's been here for five years. Paul put into words the way I feel about music, which is something I didn't know was possible. Um, and tooting off is the sole reason I still have a sense of humor after two years of COVID. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Michal is my cello teacher. He isn't here tonight, but I want you all to know that he's an amazing human being. And I feel like he's helped me to connect to music and be expressive and to be proud of myself as well. Um, <laughs> because of the community we have here, I felt comfortable to try new things. The concert we did with So Percussion was my first experience with modern music. And it opened a door to something I previously didn't think I enjoyed. Um, but fast forward to two weeks ago, I dropped rice on a stage for 18 minutes. <laughs> and I was smiling the whole time. Yes. Both choir and steel pan band were very new realms for me. I just joined this spring term. Uh, but I've had the most positive experience with both ensembles. <coughs> Choir has taught me to think about phrasing and expression and blending, and steel pan is the most fun brain exercise I've ever tried. They've both been challenging, and I never felt like I didn't belong. I only ever felt encouragement. And when it comes down to it, joining these groups um, has made me a better musician. In my opinion, life is just a collection of experiences. And especially this last year, I've tried to absorb as many of them as I can. I went to Delaney's recital last night, actually, and um, they said something relating to this, which is that music is an experience and not a task. And more so this year than any other, music has felt like the act of sharing an experience with everyone. So thank you. Thank you to my professors for showing us this world. Thank you to my fellow students and friends for sharing your creativity. And thank you to all the family and friends who have supported us in doing something that we really care about. To the students who will be here next year, I see a couple of you. <laughs> um, practice, take as many naps as you can, and check your ID card on the way out, because you might get lucky, and Tom could count this as a concert. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> My name is Morgan, and I'd just like to thank you all so much for coming here today and to support all of us graduates. We're all so grateful for you. To begin, I have a few thank yous I'd like to give out. First, I would like to thank Tom Knapp, I don't know if he's in here, for always helping me out with anything I needed. Your kindness and patience have meant the world to me. Thank you for, to Kim Andreessen for always letting me sit in her office and being there for me no matter what. You have been a friend, a therapist, an advisor, and so much more to me and other students as well. And I would really like to thank you for having chocolates every time I visit. <laughs> thank you to Dr. Lundahl for constantly pushing me out of my comfort zone. In a good way. <laughs> and to help me grow stronger and more confident every day. I never would have been able to do that without a strong role model like you. And finally, I would like to thank Dr. Tutanov for everything, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Not a single day goes by that I don't tell someone or multiple people how much I love and appreciate you. I have never felt the amount of support that you've given me from anyone. It has been unmatched. You constantly inspire me, and you have changed my life in more ways than I could ever express. And I am eternally grateful for everything you have done for me. And I would love to talk about you for the rest of the night. 
but I'll move on. <laughs> the past two years have not been easy for us, but they've proved how resilient we are. We have all struggled with something, whether it was mental health, identity, self-doubt, family problems, the pandemic, or anything else. Despite all of that, we have pushed through and have achieved so much. Not only have these problems shown us just how strong we could be, but they have also proved how necessary music is to everyone. Music is what centers us and it brings us together as a community. It is what we live for. As a music major, it can be hard to keep the same passion we had when we began our degree program. But no matter where life takes you, I encourage you to never forget your love of music and what it has given you. One of my favorite anonymous quotes is, someday we will find what we are looking for, or maybe we won't. Maybe we'll find something much greater than that. When I first moved here, I knew two things. I wanted to live in Oregon, and I wanted to study piano with Dr. Tutsunov. What I didn't know was how different I would be when I left. I was looking for a music degree, but I am leaving with something much greater. I am leaving with the lifelong friendships I have made. I am leaving with a newfound confidence and strength I never knew I possessed. And I am leaving with so much hope for the future. We have created an amazing community of students and professors here, and I know we will always be connected no matter where life takes us. As I get ready for my next chapter, I will go into it knowing I always have a place to come home to, and I hope everybody else feels that as well. As we move into our future, I know we all feel some uncertainty in what we will be doing. Some of us will be classroom teachers, some private teachers, some will be performers, and some might find a career that doesn't have anything to do with music. Wherever life takes you, music will always be a part of who you are, and whatever route you choose, Good luck. Thank you. And now it is my greatest honor to introduce Dr. Alexander Tutsnov, who will be introducing the graduates. It's wonderful to stand in front of you. I think we are very grateful for this program. I managed to learn more about our graduates from their individual respective pages than I thought I knew everything about them. But beautiful, thank you, Kim, thank you, to everybody who contributed. And I need my wonderful two family here, Dr. Keller, Dr. Landau, because I can't do it all by myself. <laughs> so, anyway, can I do one more? Uh, that should probably be funny. So, anyway, another Russian joke, yeah. <laughs> it's a quote from The Simpsons. Um, anyway, there was a moment when uh, somebody was uh, giving a speech and he said, I'm a man of few words. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Go out there and find the answers to those questions. The time has come. So, um, we begin with the graduates in the degree of Master of Music in Performance. And we would like to call on stage Lauren Groshaw.
Randy Wen. for the Bachelor of Arts degree, Elena Patterson. Morgan List. <laughs> the Bachelor of Science, Adrian de los Santos. of Science, Ryan Freigart. <laughs> Bachelor of Science, Connor Gardner. of Science, Cameron Kopa. May I please ask all of you to rise and receive a one round of applause.
thank you all for coming. Uh, it has been our privilege to work with these students and uh, know that we remain here for you. Let us know how we can help and stay in touch. All of you are invited to a reception uh, directly outside uh, the building. Uh, let's have one more round of applause for these students.